Pierce, you're the distiller of uh, Heaven Store Distillery here in Kentucky. Yes. Uh, I wonder how you made your way into whiskey. How did it start? I always tell people that I am a fifth generation distiller. I just happen to be the first one in the family to do it legally. <laughs> so how, how did it start? Uh, when, when did you come into distilling? Uh, obviously a long time ago, because I have been in the business for 36 years now. And um, I actually started out as a uh, plant chemist. And so I learned uh, all the uh, beer chemistry that goes uh, into the distilling, mm. grain grading, uh, sensory of distillate, and ultimately uh, the evaluation of aged product. So you lead the, the distillery here in, in, in Kentucky, which yes. is one of uh, two? And there will be a second one, so there will be uh, in total three distilleries for, for Heaven Store? No, there will no. only be two distilleries. But you also do Tennessee whiskey in Tennessee. For... Yes, we do Tennessee. Okay. But unfortunately, I, I think about home. Yeah. And and obviously, this is, this is my home base. Yeah, of it, course. And so, yeah. So I think about the two distilleries that we uh, will be operating here in mm -hmm. Kentucky. And when will the second one open? Uh, we're hoping spring of next year. Okay. So tell me a little bit about Kentucky bourbon. How does it differ from the um, from the Tennessee bourbon? Mash bill, I think, is different, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, there, there are several factors. Uh, even though we're both using limestone water, mm -hmm. I think that probably there is a difference, albeit subtle. But uh, yes, the mash bills are different. Uh, probably the uh, strain of yeast mm -hmm. is different, and also too probably the distillation technique is different. Uh, U.S. distillers are all, always very proud about the yeast. Yes. And uh, what, what's your yeast? What are you using? And is it a secret how it's uh, composed? Uh, no, it, it's, it's not really a secret. And, and, uh, and it's, it's just, uh, uh, it's, uh, we, we source it. Mm. And, and uh, the thing is, uh, back in the old days, everybody had their own yeast and they mm. kept their own yeast. But, um, in the interest of keeping consistency and continuity, it's always better to have someone supply your yeast for you and they can keep it consistent so that way there aren't changes along the way. Okay. Let's talk about the <clears throat> technical process of, of making whiskey here. Yes. Uh, let's talk about the fermentation. Yes. How long is it here? Okay. It, it takes us uh, from, from the time that we add the yeast until uh, fermentation is complete. That's about two and a half days. Okay. Uh, during that time, the uh, yeast will uh, wake up, they'll hydrate, and then they'll start to eat the uh, sugars. Mm -hmm. And it takes them that amount of time to uh, clean off the buffet, as I like to say. And as we have seen on the distillery, you, you put uh, the, the distiller's beer through three stills, right? Uh, actually, two. Two. Yes, two, two stills. One is the uh, beer still, which mm -hmm. is, is the... Uh, uh, initial extraction, mm -hmm. and then the uh, second one is the doubler or double distillation, mm -hmm. which uh, actually is just a purifying process. Okay, so how, how much alcohol is in your beer? Okay, it is approximately 10% mm -hmm. alcohol uh, when it goes into the still, and it's approximately 60% when it comes out of the still. Mm -hmm. And you water it down for the, for the barrels? Yes, yeah, we'll add water to it. And, and dilute it down. Okay. And that's because? Uh, first of all, it is uh, because of the standard of, of identity it says that you can't have it more than 62.5% uh, alcohol by volume and still call it bourbon. So we will add purified water. Okay. Could you water it down more, let's say to 58 or something? And the answer is yes, you can. And probably what you're going to see is a slight difference in the liquid because now now that you've added a little more water to it, now you're going to get more water extractables from that uh, mm -hmm. barrel. Is there something like a sweet spot for, for bourbon in times of aging, in terms of aging? And uh, I would tell you no. no. Uh, the answer is uh, <laughs> because what are you looking for, number one, as far as the flavor profile, but also, too, how do you store it? Mm -hmm. If it's going to be... Uh, aged for an extended period of time, then I want to uh, keep it in an environment where it's not so um, 
exposed to uh, mm. changes in the seasons. Uh, but especially for the Heaven Store products, we're aging them out at about five years. So we do want that exposure to the elements. Uh, let's go back to the fermentation for one more time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it would make a big difference if you ferment in summer or in winter, will it? I, and the answer is no, because it's a controlled fermentation. So you heat it or cool it? Okay. Uh, what, uh, after the mashing mm -hmm. process, we cool it down to uh, a certain temperature. Mm -hmm. And then we actually, because fermentation does give off heat, we have cooling coils, so we can maintain that fermentation regardless of the uh, conditions outside. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for, for your interview, for your time. And thank you for being our host uh, at the distillery. Thank you so much. It was an honor uh, to meet with everyone today.